Good morning. Today we're going to discuss uh, organ transplantation and as you could imagine the field of organ transplantation has made a remarkable progress since 1823 uh, where uh, the first skin autograph transplantation occurred up to uh, now uh, recently uh, for example, in uh, 2014 was the first neonatal organ transplantation. Um, one of the driving forces of uh, organ transplantation is the, the cost, um, of course. And um, it has become actually the treatment of choice of end-stage organ failure. Um, so far, we're going to discuss transplantation of the kidney, liver, pancreas, intestine, heart, and lung. And um, in addition, we're going to discuss uh, uh, complications related to organ transplantation um, as well as the process related to um, pre-laboratory um, work and uh, diagnostic evaluations to, uh, before transplantation and also treatment to prevent um, immunosuppression um, and complications that are related to that. So transplantation again is the act of transferring an organ or tissue um, or actually a cell from uh, one place to another. This could mean from uh, an auto transplantation from uh, the same uh, um, patient uh, from one part of the body to another uh, from the same species, uh, from uh, one human to another human, or from another species to a human uh, species. We're going to give examples uh, related to that. The type types of transplant uh, could be from a deceased donor, uh, from an example, um, a brain uh, dead donor, or uh, the heart after cardiopulmonary arrest. Um, or another organ related to uh, a patient that has uh, gone through uh, cardiopulmonary arrest. Uh, living donors uh, from a family member, friend or spouse or from a donor list or uh, senile transplantation is actually a non-viable option that might become uh, soon. Now the types of uh, transplants The transplants uh, may be uh, the patient's own tissue, uh, such as autograft, and that includes uh, bone, bone marrow, and even skin graft. Um, genetically identical uh, monozygotic twins, uh, donor tissue, such as isograft. Genetically dissimilar donor tissue, such as allograft or homograft, or rarely graft from a different species such as the senograft or heterograft. We're going to go into detail in each uh, transplant tissue may be cell as well. For example, the uh, hematopoietic stem cell um, for the bone marrow transplantation, uh, lymphocytes, uh, pancreatic is islet cell transplant could also be done. Um, tissues may be grafted to an anatomical normal site um, for example, in heart transplants or an abnormal site, um, which are the heterotopic in a kidney transplanted into the iliac fossa. Almost always transplantation is done to improve patient survival. However, uh, some procedures, uh, for example, in hand, larynx, tongue, or facial transplantation is basically to enhance the quality of life but it would not improve survival. And this have a significant risk related to surgery and immunosuppression. So these procedures are in an early experimental phase, the one uh, already discussed. Um, with uh, rare exceptions, uh, clinical transplantation uses allograft from living related, living unrelated or deceased donors. Living donors are often used for kidneys um, and increasingly f for uh, liver, pancreas, and even lung. Use of deceased donor organs uh, from heart beating or non heart beating donors 
has helped reduce the disparity between organ demand and supply. However, the demand uh, you would see in the comparison uh, for costs um, still have, has uh, far exceeds supply and the number of patients waiting for organ transplant continues to grow. All allograft recipients are at risk for graft rejection. The recipient immune system recognizes the graft as foreign and seeks to destroy it. Recipients of graft containing immune cells such as in bone marrow, intestine and liver, you would see that they are at risk of graft versus host disease and also risk of these complications is minimized by pre-transplantation screening as well as uh, is decreased with the immunosuppressive therapy during and after transplantation. All this will be discussed in this PowerPoint. So again, autotransplants involve the transfer of tissue or organs from one part of an individual to another part of the same individual, meaning that you are the patient donating your own uh, uh, organ or tissue in the case, for example, of autograft, uh, an example would be um, having a saphenectomy and uh, transfer that into the coronary arteries uh, for uh, coronary artery uh, bypass or a skin graft after uh, a burn, for example, or major trauma. There's no need for immunosuppression since uh, uh, is your own organ. It would not be uh, presented to the uh, adaptive immune system for possible rejection and creation of antibodies. Although uh, transplants uh, involve transfer from another individual to a different individual but from the same species, meaning from human to human. So the most common scenario uh, would be, uh, for example, transplanting a liver <coughs> to another person or heart or lung or kidney etc and of course uh, because even do even though uh, a, a lot of laboratory and screening is done uh, to avoid rejection immunosuppression is required uh, because there is always a minimal percentage of uh, graft versus host rejection <coughs> I'm sorry Senotransplant uh, involved uh, transfer across species, uh, meaning that, for example, a porcine uh, valve that um, you could obtain from an animal to uh, a human. And of course, uh, this one is a more um, uh, a risk is more a risk for rejection. So uh, immunosuppression is uh, uh, highly utilized because of that. As you can see, uh, there is uh, historical issues about uh, organ transplantation and, and, and advances as well in uh, organ transplant from the one already mentioned, uh, the first initial one uh, was uh, in 19, uh, I'm sorry, in 1823. Uh, uh, which it was the first uh, skin autograph uh, transplantation in Germany by Karl Bonger. Another one uh, would be, for example, a cornea transplant in 1905. Uh, 1954 was the first successful kidney transplant. <coughs> uh, 1998 uh, was the, actually the first successful live donor pan pancreas transplantation. But even after that, to bring uh, the PowerPoint more uh, current, uh, in the 2000 was the first robotic donor nephrectomy uh, for living donor kidney transplant, and that was done in Illinois. Uh, for example, in 2006, as well in Illinois, in, in the University of uh, that state, uh, was the first uh, pair donation of a kidney transplant for ABO incompatible. Um, in 2008 was the first uh, transplant of a human wine pipe using a patient's own stem cell. 
in 2008 as well was the first baby born from transplanted ovary. 2011, um, first double leg transplant, and that was done in Valencia Hospital in Spain. 2013 um, was the first successful uh, face transplantation, and uh, that was done in Poland. 2014 in Ukraine uh, was the first neonatal organ transplant, and 2014 was the first successful penile transplant, um, etc. But the problem is the uh, cost. And um, you would see how many uh, patients are registered and are in waiting lists um, due to. Um, the complex situation of obtaining uh, tissue, an organ, uh, donor, as well as, again, if you're able to look at the um, comparative cost, uh, it's one of the driving forces um, of illegal organ trafficking after, uh, and actually for transportation of tourism. According to the New England uh, Journal of Medicine, a human kidney can be purchased for a thousand to two thousand in um, Latin American, and uh, a kidney for ten thousand uh, in South Africa. So price disparities are uh, based on donor race and, and a driving force of attracting organ cells in South Africa, uh, as well as in other parts of the world, uh, have. Um, increased uh, the illegality of uh, organ transplantation as well as the, um, yeah, safety has decreased and, and, and in addition uh, disparities and, and waiting lists uh, to obtain uh, tissue and, and organ uh, donors. In the United States of America, uh, tissue transplants are regulated by the U.S. Food and Drug Administra Administration, which is the FDA, uh, which uh, sets uh, strict regulations on the safety of the transplants, primarily aimed uh, at the prevention of the spread of communic communicable diseases. In uh, 2007, uh, the CDC um, uh, has strict regulations to, uh, to screen for HIV as well as hepatitis C in uh, all the organs uh, for possible trans transplantation. Um, so both developing and developed countries uh, have forged, uh, forged uh, various policies to try to increase the safety and availability of organ transplants to their citizens. So um, we have ruled uh, all adults potential donors with the opting out policy unless they attain cards specifying not to be. However, um, potential recipients in developing countries may mirror their more developed counterparts in desperation. Uh, potential donors uh, in developing countries do not. Um, so you could see here the major cost of uh, organ transplantation and that's the reason why um, there is uh, ethical concerns and um, as well as the availability of, of the organ um, has to increased. So major indications for solid organ transplants are um, in general, then we're going to go one by one by uh, organ, specific organ. So death uh, within 12 to 24 months in the absence of an organ transplant. Unacceptable quality of life without transplant. And that could mean uh, intractable pruritus uh, in, for example, a patient that has uh, progressive sclerosis and cholangitis or um, progressive uh, shortness of breath uh, with or without oxygenation in a patient that has severe COPD. Uh, Another one would be potential lethal complications of underlying diseases, for example, intractable cardiac arrhythmias, uh, prevention of uh, the manifestations of genetic illnesses, uh, for example, in patients that have uh, uh, familial amyloidosis or uh, metabolic disease of the liver, um, 
all other forms of medical and surgical management have been tried and uh, this have failed. So now we're going to go on specific uh, to every single organ. Uh, we'll start with uh, kidney. Kidney transplantation is the most common type of solid organ transplantation. The primary indication is end-stage renal disease or renal failure. So it would be end-stage renal failure. In addition, um, anticipated uh, end-stage renal failure within the next 12 months. Uh, combined liver kidney transplant in the presence of combined organ failure and uh, also a combined uh, heart kidney transplant in the presence of combined organ failure. So um, before we come here, um, there's absolute and relative contraindications for a kidney transplantation. And that includes uh, comorbidities that could compromise graft survival. So if the, even though the patient has end-stage renal failure, if the patient has um, severe heart disorders or cancer is an absolute contraindication, uh, which can be detected, of course, uh, through the screening process. Now, relative contraindications uh, would be uh, poorly controlled diabetes, which you know that it can lead to renal failure, uh, cer certain viral infections such as hepatitis C or end-stage liver disease, um, which could be worsened by the immunosuppression therapy that we have to put this patient on. If the patient is in their 70s and sometimes 80s, maybe candidates for transplant if they are otherwise healthy and functionally independent with good social support. If they have a reasonable long life expectancy and if transplantation is likely to substantially, substantially improve function and quality of life beyond simply freeing them from dialysis. Those are also our requirements. Uh, patients with type 1 diabetes may be candidates for simultaneous pancreas kidney or pancreas after kidney transplantation. So frequently diagnosed uh, uh, diagnosis that coincides with um, uh, kidney failure would be, you know, diabetes and hypertension are the two main leaders, but also nephropathies, uh, for example, either glomerulosclerosis or um, IgA nephropathy or uh, um, contrast induced nephropathy or because the patient was in chronic uh, NSAIDs that led to nephropathies, uh, polycystic kidney diseases, uh, congenital abnormalities, and also amyloidosis. So more than one half of donated kidney come from previously healthy brain dead people. About one third of these kidneys are marginal with physiologic or procedure related damage. More kidneys from non-heart beating donors that are called donation after cardiac death are being used now. These kidneys may have been damaged by ischemia before the donor's death and their function is often impaired because of acute tubular necrosis. However, over the long term, they seem to function as well as kidneys from donors that meet standard criteria, meaning that the patient has not gone through uh, ischemia that um, could have implicated the renal function of that particular kidney uh, uh, donor. So complications associated with kidney before uh, we go into the liver, um, even though we're going to touch uh, in general all the complications. So despite the uh, use of immunosuppressants, about 20% of recipients have one or more rejection episodes within the first year after transplantation. And uh, most episodes are easily treated with corticosteroid. However, uh, they uh, could contribute to long-term insufficiency and graft failure. Rejection uh, of the kidney can be diagnosed by percutaneous needle biopsy if the diagnosis is unclear uh, clinically. 
because most likely uh, the symptoms that you're going to see are related to renal failure. Biopsy uh, may also help distinguish uh, uh, rejection um, if it's present. Um, you could also uh, therapy-wise uh, intensify immunosuppressive therapy with a uh, high dose of pulse corticosteroids. Um, this is if um, immunosuppressants are inefficient, uh, dose is tapered and hemodialysis is resumed until a subsequent uh, transplant is available. Nephrectomy of the transplanted kidney is necessary if hematuria is present or uh, fever develops after immunosuppressants are stopped. So now let's go to um, liver. The uh, transplantation uh, of the liver is uh, the second most common type of solid organ transplantation and indications include for cirrhosis, <coughs> liver cirrhosis, uh, so 70% of transplantations in the United States uh, are due to uh, hepatitis C. Fulminant uh, hepatic necrosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, biliary atresia, as well as um, patients that have end-stage liver disease with a life expectancy of less than 12 to 24 months, and who have developed life-threatening complications. They also, um, is the indication is present when the MELT score is more than 15, uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, as I explained, and also um, additional considerations could be done uh, with diseases that lead to uh, liver failure, such as amyloidosis. And, and this would be, uh, for example, in patients that have cholestasis, uh, primarily scler sclerosing cholangitis or any type of autoimmune hepatitis. Absolute contraindications uh, for liver would be uh, elevated intracranial pressure, um, more than 40, uh, low cerebral perfusion pressure, uh, less than 60. Uh, in patients with uh, fulminant hepatic necrosis, severe pulmonary hypertension, uh, meaning that um, Having uh, a mean pulmonary arterial pressure more than 50 is also an absolute contraindication. If the patient is septic, it's an absolute contraindication. If the patient has um, a metastatic hepatocellular carcinoma, but when um, the condition has led to poor outcome, So nearly all donated liver uh, come from size and ABO match, brain dead, so deceased patients, uh, uh, heart beating donors as well. The main uh, complications for liver, um, the liver itself is less aggressively rejected than other organs, uh, such as for example the kidney that we just have discussed. But um, hyperacute rejection, uh, even though they occur less frequent, um, can be often uh, uh, present with uh, the first three to six months after uh, transplantation. And uh, risk factors include uh, young recipients, young, you know, younger recipients, uh, older uh, donor age. Um, also graded HLA mismatching, um, patients that have either the donor or the recipient autoimmune disorders, uh, worse nutritional status in the recipient of alcoholism, um, and of course symptoms and signs of rejection depend, depending on um, the time, if it's acute, hyperacute, or chronic, uh, but mostly is related to um, the same symptoms of uh, uh, hepatitis, for example, uh, or uh, cholestasis.
and this is you would see that is basically treated with uh, IV corticosteroids and it can also be treated with anti-thymocyte globulin now immunosuppression itself as a treatment to avoid rejection could contribute to recurrency of viral hepatitis in patients who had viral hepatitis induced cirrhosis before transplantation so you have to uh, be careful with that So frequent uh, diagnosis associated with uh, liver failure would be cirrhosis of the liver. Uh, it could also be associated with non-alcoholic steatosis, meaning that stasis, uh, hepatitis, hepatitis with cirrhosis, uh, progressive sclerosing cholangitis, primary biliary cirrhosis, hepatocellular carcinoma, um, metabolic abnormalities, um, autoimmune hepatitis and even biliary atresia. Now let's discuss uh, uh, pancreas is another um, topic of transplantation. Uh, basically um, pancreas uh, is a form of pancreatic uh, B cell replacement that can restore normal glycemia in diabetic patients. Because the recipient exchanges risk of insulin injection for risk of immunosuppression, uh, eligibility is limited mostly to patients who have type 1 diabetes with renal failure and who are those candidates for kidney transplantation. For example, more than 90% of pancreas transplantation include also a transplantation of a kidney. So uh, simultaneous pancreas and kidney, uh, pancreas after kidney as well, and as I said, most likely would be the patient with type 1 uh, diabetes, even though type 2 could be done, but the criteria would be more, more strict. Um, so you have to have uh, a repeated failure to control glycemia with standard treatments and episodes of hypoglycemia um, to be able to receive this. Relative uh, contraindications uh, for um, pancreas transplantation include uh, age more than 55, uh, significant cardiovascular disease, uh, previous MI, for example, uh, cabbage in the past, uh, Picoteneous coronary intervention or any positive stress test would be uh, a contraindication for uh, pancreas. Complications uh, for pancreatic uh, uh, transplantation despite adequate immunosuppression, acute rejection could develop up to 60 to 80 percent. So uh, that would affect the exocrine function uh, of the gland. Um, Compared to kidney transplantation alone, um, when the, the pancreas is transplanted along with the kidney, the rejection is even higher, even though that's one of the indications. So, as you could see, um, when they're both transplanted, uh, an acute rejection uh, could be best detected um, when the patient have increased serum creatinine because pancreas rejection almost always accompanies kidney rejection. Um, so after pancreas alone transplantation, a stable urine amylase concentration in patients uh, could also be uh, followed uh, to uh, uh, make sure that there is no um, rejection. Frequent uh, diagnosis, uh, diabetes of course is the, the most prevalent. Now let's uh, go over uh, intestine uh, transplantation, which it refers to uh, from colon to small bowel. So typical indications, uh, even though it's done uh, infrequently, um, patients are dependent on TPN and uh, cholestatic liver disease. Um, patients who are at risk of death because of intestinal failure, for example, secondary to intestinal disorder such as gastroschisis or Hirschsprung 
or um, if they have uh, mesenteric ischemia or an extensive Crohn's disease, um, patients that uh, develop complications of TPN uh, used to treat uh, liver failure or um, sepsis, for example, patients that have an invasive tumor that cause obstruction, abscess, fistulas, ischemia, or even hemorrhage, um, patients are unable to meet fluid and even nutritional needs through TPN, and they have recurrent dehydration and even failure to drive. To thrive, I'm sorry. So, um, complications of intestine before we go into multiple um, visceral. Um, weekly endoscopy is indicated to check for rejection because about 30 to 50 percent of recipients have one or more bouts of rejection in the first year. The symptoms uh, is related to uh, intestinal problems such as diarrhea, abdominal cramping, fever. Um, when you do an endoscopy evaluation, uh, the mucosa might seem uh, to be uh, erythematose and friable uh, with ulcerations. Um, you could do a biopsy of this and treatment basically you would see in the acute rejection will be high dose uh, corticosteroids and anti-thymocyte uh, globulin or even both. So uh, multivisceral, you could transplant a liver, small bowel, and even pancreas uh, with or without addition of the stomach or colon. Um, and these are for one uh, of the above, an irreversible cholestasis fibrosis secondary to TPN and uh, or um, when there's tumor present, as I explained. So frequent diagnosis associated with uh, intestinal failure would be, for example, traumatic, um, um, perforation, uh, Crohn's disease, enterocolitis, uh, necrotizing in the children after an ischemic uh, process uh, that has uh, superimposed bacterial infection in the neonate, um, failure on TPN, and uh, also any other ischemic uh, uh, or vasculitis that have produced uh, edema and, and, and capillary permeability at the level of the intestine and superimposed infection. Now let's go through uh, heart transplantation. Basically, um, it's an option for patients who have end-stage heart failure, uh, end-stage coronary artery disease, arrhythmias, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or even uh, congenital heart diseases uh, who remain at risk of death and have intolerable symptoms despite optimal uh, drug therapy. So the life expect expectancy is less than one year uh, due to heart disease. And, and again, all the therapies has been exhausted. Frequent uh, diagnosis I associated with this or end-stage heart disease. Uh, severe systolic or diastolic ventricular dysfunction, valvular heart disease, um, but again, non correctable uh, by replacement or repair, life threatening arrhythmias, non otherwise correctable by either um, anti arrhythmic medication or ablation therapy. Um, so, irreversible cardiac diseases and even cardiomyopathies. Absolute contraindications uh, uh, for a heart transplant is pulmonary hypertension. Relative contraindications include uh, uh, organ insufficiency, such as pulmonary insufficiency, renal insufficiency, and hepatic insufficiency. Complications associated with heart, uh, about 50 to 80 percent of patients have at least one episode of rejection. Uh, most patients are asymptomatic, but if they do develop symptoms, um, you would understand that it would have exactly, if it was related to uh, um, cardiac arrhythmias, they would have arrhythmias. Um, they would also have uh, um, signs of heart failure or uh, valvular, valvulopathy or even cardiomyopathy. Now let's go through uh, lung transplantation. Um, basically, in lung transplantation, 
um, any ambulatory patient with end stage pulmonary disease would be uh, a candidate for uh, lung transplantation. And basically, it's an option for patients who have respiratory failure and who remain at risk of death despite optimal medical treatment. So the most common indications are COPD, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, cystic fibrosis, any advanced alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, uh, primary pulmonary hypertension, not secondary to heart diseases. Less common indications uh, include sarcoidosis, uh, bronchiectasis, congenital heart disease. Um, so basically the medical therapy uh, has been in effect, ineffective or is unavailable. You can see here uh, already diseases that I have mentioned. <coughs> uh, indications for both uh, are basically primary pulmonary hypertension, um, cardiac defects that are non-correctable by surgical therapy uh, such as Asimmanger uh, syndrome, uh, patients who are um, appropriate for single or double lung transplant and who have severe cardiac disease not otherwise treatable by medical therapy. Now, um, timing uh, of referral uh, for lung transplantation uh, should be determined by uh, a pulmonary function test. Uh, patients should have a PaO2 less than 55 millimeters of mercury and a PaCO2 more than 50, which, if you recall, is uh, very similar to the um, classification of respiratory uh, failure. In addition, um, if they have a progression of uh, clinical, radiographic, and even, uh, um, you know, physiological symptoms of the disease. Rejection uh, developed in most patients despite immunosuppressive therapy. Um, so the symptoms uh, are similar to um, the disease process that uh, initiated the failure. Fever, dyspnea, on exertion, cough, um, desaturation, as well as uh, obstructive, uh, unrestricted pulmonary disease by uh, pulmonary function test. So the hyperacute rejection must be distinguished uh, from early graft dysfunction uh, caused by ischemic injury uh, during the transplantation procedure. And this could be differentiated by uh, chest x-ray or CT scan of the chest. Uh, rejection usually uh, could also be diagnosed, of course, by bronchoscopy, and you could do a biopsy and send it to analyze. And you would see that therapy would be the pulse of IV high-dose steroids and uh, you could also give uh, aerosolized cyclosporin. Patients could also even have rejection after a year. So in general, uh, for all the organ transplantations, what are the absolute contraindications for all of them? We went through the specifics, now it's going to be general. So basically, if the patient has infection, cannot be receiving uh, an organ. Active, untreated, or untreatable malignancy. So if the patient has an active infection, if the patient has a malignancy, if the patient has post-transplant, uh, any type of lymphoproliferative disorder such as leukemia, lymphomas, multiple myelomas, and even with, uh, uh, even if it's non-active or if the, P the PET-CT is negative, um, active alcohol abuse uh, or their other substance abuses, uh, patients require six months of abstinence before uh, the transplant. Uh, HIV is an absolute contraindication. Inability to give informed consent, of course. Uh, any significant uncorrectable life-limiting medical condition, irreversible brain damage, uh, history of non-compliance as well is an absolute contraindication. Now, relative contraindications will be a recent graft loss, so if the patient had rejection, uh, recent history of mal malignancy within five years, any active psychiatric or behavioral disorder, any remote history more than six months of alcohol or substance abuse, 
uh, any insufficient uh, social caregiver support, uh, HIV infection without AIDS, um, obesity, a BMI of more or equal than 35, uh, chronic peptic ulcer disease or GI bleeding or diverticulitis, any high dose systemic corticosteroid use uh, um, before the transplantation. So what do we do for um, pre-transplantation evaluation? So basically, um, before the risk and expense of transplantation are, are undertaken, and uh, since there is scarce donor organs, uh, and and you know it's committed, the medical team is committed um, to uh, uh, basically go through the pre-transplantation screening. So, in the pre-transplantation sc screening, recipients and donors are tested for HLA, which is human leukocyte antigen, um, also in the past called uh, major histocompatibility complex, and for H A, I'm sorry, ABO antigens, and recipients are tested for pre-sensitization to donor antigen. Um, besides that, uh, knowing the typing of HLA and ABO compatibility. Um, Donors and recipients' exposure to common infectious pathogens are active, I'm sorry, and active as well as latent infections must be detected before transplantation, so you should send cultures. And cultures uh, for um, cytomegalovirus, and ASTEM bar virus, uh, herpes simplex, varicella zoster, for example, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, um, mycobacterium tuberculosis is another one. Uh, so, in, a, in addition, you have to go through adequate social caregiver support if the patient has adequate financial support. So, uh, another um, uh, other test that should be done is psychological evaluation and clearance to see if the patient will be um, uh, opt to uh, sign a consent and also to be compliant. Uh, you should do an echocardiogram and even a MUGA scan uh, to evaluate uh, heart uh, diseases. Uh, um, patients should obtain an ejection fraction of uh, uh, more than 40% and also cardiology clearance. Um, colonoscopy if the patient is uh, more than 50 years of age. If there is polyps, remove the polyps. Liver function test. Uh, uh, should be done as well, uh, uh, and all the uh, bilirubin panel, um, HIV testing, as I said, hepatitis, uh, uh, BUN and creatinine, uh, so serum creatinine less than 2.5 uh, milligrams per deciliter in adults and less than uh, 1.5 in children, and or glomerular filtration rate of more than 35. If this is abnormal, um, maybe a patient could be eligible for combinant transplantation. You should also do carotid Doppler ultrasound uh, for patients that have uh, non coronary artery disease. You should also do ankle brachial index uh, to uh, measure uh, the um, levels of peripheral vascular disease. So if uh, indicator or age above 50 or if the AABI is less than 0 0.95, uh, remember that the normal values are more than 0 0.95 to 1.2. That's normal. So if it's less than uh, 0 0.95, that indicates that the patient has peripheral artery disease. Patients should have dental examination, ophthalmology examination for patients that are diabetics. Mammograms uh, for patients that are greater than 40 years of age, uh, GYN uh, examination, and even immunizations. Children have a priority uh, over adults, and remember, uh, one of the relative contraindications is the BMI more than 35. Um, uh, we check for uh, ABO compatibility as well as the HLA match. Now, um, 
what do we use for uh, immunosuppressants? Um, immunosuppression control graft rejection and are primarily responsible for the success of transplantation. However, they suppressed, remember, all immune responses and contribute to many post-transplantation complications, including death due to overwhelming infection. So immunosuppressants must usually be continued long after transplantation, but initially high doses can be reduced a few weeks after the procedure and low dosages can be continued indefinitely uh, unless rejection occur. Uh, so corticosteroids uh, are one. Uh, a high dose is usually given at the time of transplantation, then it's reduced gradually to a maintenance dose, which is given indefinitely. Several months after transplantation, corticosteroids can be given on alternative days. So this regimen will will prevent uh, growth restriction in children, for example, if you're using in children. Another uh, type of uh, um, immunosuppressants that could be used is the calcinerin inhibitors, and those are your cyclosporin and tacrolimus, which basically the main action is to block T-cell transcription, uh, the process that is, is required for production of cytokines uh, by the inflammatory uh, uh, cascade. Uh, thereby uh, inhibiting T-cell proliferation and activation. Cyclosporin is the most common used drugs in heart and lung transplantation and it can be given alone, uh, but usually uh, uh, it's given with other drugs such as uh, prednisone, which is a steroid, and also athatriopine. Another one um, that can be used is tacrolimus. Uh, it's the most common used drug in kidney, liver, pancreas, and small bowel. Uh, that may be started at the time of transplantation or days after the procedure. Another um, type uh, that can be used are the purine metabolism inhibitors. And an example of that one is athatriopine or imuran. This is an anti-metabolite and is usually started at the time of transplantation and most patients tolerate it indefinitely. The most serious adverse effects are bone marrow depression and uh, also um, uh, any type of hypersensitivity. Another one uh, that can be used uh, would be um, immunosuppressive IgGs. Um, those are anti-lymphocytes globally. Um, or monoclonal, monoclonal antibody and examples of those are your subset. In addition to that, uh, uh, ir uh, irradiation could be used uh, of a graft. Local recipient tissues or both can be used to treat cranial transplant rejection uh, when other treatments, for example, corticosteroids or athatropine has been ineffective. Future therapies, um, protocols and agents to induce graft antigen specific tolerance without suppressing the immune system uh, are being uh, studied. Uh, two strategies that are, are promising are the blockage of T cell uh, pathway using uh, cytotoxic T lymphocytes um, or induction of uh, coexisting. Uh, of donor and recipient immune cells in which graft tissue is recognized as self. Um, remember that we do have self antigens. Uh, so those, for example, are the purpose of uh, subset. So Belatacept is another antibody that inhibits T cell co-stimulatory pathway uh, that can be used in kidney transplant uh, as well as liver. So immediately uh, uh, post-management post -management, uh, up to 90 days, uh, intermediate up to one year or long-term over one year. Remember compliance is um, the best uh, to avoid uh, uh, rejection. So post-transplantation complications could include rejection, uh, infection, uh, renal insufficiency, atherosclerosis, and even up to cancer. So rejection of solid, solid organs uh, may be 
this is important to remember hyperacute accelerated acute and even chronic which is late stage symptoms uh, of course vary according to the organ that is failing hyperacute rejection occurs within 48 hours of transplantation and is caused by pre-existing complement fixing antibodies to graft ant antigens so it's pre-sensitization it has become rare uh, as pre-transplantation screening has improved uh, hyperacute rejection is characterized by small vessel thrombosis and graft infarction no treatment is effective except graft removal in accelerated rejection which occurs three to five days after transplantation is caused by pre-existing non-complement fixing antibodies to graft antigen is also rare since we do have the screening process uh, treatment uh, is due to high dose uh, pulse corticosteroids if uh, vascular changes um, do not improve with this uh, plasma exchange uh, which may clear circulating antibodies more rapidly could be used so we have covered hyperacute that uh, there's no treatment for that only graft removal and occurs within 48 hours accelerated which uh, could be treated with either uh, high dose uh, corticosteroids or plasma exchange and this occurs three to five days after transplantation now acute rejection is graft destruction after transplantation and is caused by t-cell mediated delayed hypersensitivity reaction to allograft and histocompatibility antigens acute rejection is different from hyperacute and accelerated because it is mediated by a de novo anti-graft T-cell response not by pre-existing antibodies so this occur about five days after transplantation and um, even episodes could be present within 10 years acute rejection is characterized by hemorrhage edema and necrosis so it's often reversed by intensifying the immunosuppressive therapy or with high dose uh, pulse corticosteroids chronic rejection is graft dysfunction often without fever typically occurs months to years after transplantation the cause is multiple and include early antibody mediated rejection uh, it could include ischemia or reperfusion injury or drug toxicity or even infection um, or even hyperlipidemia or hypertension um, it does progress uh, despite immunosuppressive therapy uh, so basically what um, the main treatment would be um, taking out the organ that has been transplanted and uh, replaced by another transplant but remember failure or rejection is one of the relative contraindications for a second transplant not absolute but relative so malignancy could be present infection uh, could be present as well uh, many opportunistic infections occur within the first to six months after transplantation um, infections uh, could be bacterial or could be viral um, most patients are, are given antimicrobial therapy such as trimetropine sulfamatoxazole uh, to prevent uh, pneumocystis giroveni uh, neutropenic patients uh, are sometimes treated with uh, fluoroquinolones such as levaquin um, in addition uh, if you're going to treat uh, cytomegalovirus and other uh, herpes virus uh, remember ganciclovir or aciclovir uh, could be used patients could have uh, uh, renal disorders associated uh, with it even cancer such as uh, basal cell carcinoma um, Hodgkin or non-Hodgkin lymphoma Kaposi sarcoma um, and this patient should be treated with uh, purine metabolism antagonists which are tacrolimus or astatriopine all the complications uh, uh, immunosuppressants especially corticosteroids 
uh, increased bone resorption and risk for osteoporosis. Um, patients should have reduced uh, tobacco and alcohol abuse. Uh, so treat these patients with vitamin D, biphosphonates, and uh, any other resort, anti-resortive drugs uh, after transplantation. Systemic atherosclerosis uh, can result from hyperlipidemia. Uh, and you know already how to treat hyperlipidemia uh, with statins on less contraindicated, so check the liver function test of these patients before using statins. Otherwise, uh, you could use uh, niacin or um, fibrinic acid. So what's now uh, been uh, emerging, uh, organ allocation uh, cost uh, is increasingly large. Um, um, the payer kidney donation and um, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis uh, is an increased uh, frequency of cause of liver disease. And here you have a summary of the indications uh, uh, for general transplantation. Remember death? has to be imminent uh, within 12 to 24 months, uh, unacceptable quality of life without the transplant, potential lethal complications of underlying diseases, um, and everything that we have covered already.